Welcome to the latest episode of Gallifrey. Uh, let me redo that. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the uh, next episode of Gallifrey Pirate Radio. Um, I am your host, uh, David Beauchamp. I am joined by my phenomenal co-host, Clayton Witt. And we are here to talk about the final episode of Sarah Jane Adventures. Um, hence the reason I'm wearing my Sarah Jane shirt. Um, very, very sad episode for me, um, just because it's the end. Uh, we won't get any more Liz Sladen as Sarah Jane, or at least not anything new. Um, so this this episode uh, is just definitely um, lends a heavy heart to me. Um, but let's how we normally start this. Um, what did you think of the episode? What did you like? What didn't you like? Um, what are your thoughts and feelings about this episode? Um, out of this batch of episodes, I think it was probably the best. Really? I think so. I think that it did a very good job providing something for every character to do. You don't really feel like anyone has been left out. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely really balanced with the, with all the characters. I think just, just in terms of actual screenwriting, it's probably the strongest episode that they've done out of this batch. Everything just felt like it was there for a reason, and it happened for a reason. It moved at a good pace. There was never really a part of it that felt boring. I have to agree with you on that. I gotta say, with some of the other episodes, I thought segments dragged, but this one, yeah, you're right. It, um, because I watch these multiple times, and sometimes I don't, I don't think about that sort of thing, about how, how well they flow, but now that you mention it, this one does, particularly out of, out of the three of this, of season five here, um, it definitely has a phenomenal pace to it. It, it flows really, really nice. It, I don't, yeah, you're right, it doesn't drag like some of the other ones do. But, um, I love the episode, I um, mean, well, because it's the last, uh, Liz Slayton episode, but I know how you said you wanted to see this one have something to do, have some, maybe some sort of mention of Ellie from the previous episode. Yeah. It had a mention of Ellie in it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, so it makes me think that there was going to be more possibly for that character, um, or something. I, I, there, there were there were the repercussions. Yeah. Which I was really uh, happy to see. Yeah, I like continuity when it happens. <laughs> yeah. Unlike you, DC Comics, but that's another topic. Um, I had a third jab in there on okay. DC. Um, I'm still phenomenally mad about what they've done. But um, there's a lot of stuff I liked in this episode. There are lots of nice little touches that, I mean, not only leads continuity to this season, but to the uh, overall Hoovers. I love the fact that we saw that little card from Unit that Sarah yeah. Jane gave to the uh, cleaning girl. I, that was well, brilliant. Um, I thought the chemistry that Luke and Sky had was great. I mean, it was rough at first, but then you got the acceptance, you know, they, they buddied up, they teamed up. I mean, they really had a great working chemistry, I thought, which well, really surprised me. I, I think that was one of the best parts of the episode, that... The char every character was paired up with someone else, and it worked well in each case. Yeah. And even even Sarah Jane and uh, I think her name was Rania, the uh, the cleaning, cleaning girl. lady. Yeah. yeah. They, it just it worked really well between them. Yeah. I like the way that you know you come across this woman who was introduced in the pre credit sequence, who the next time you see her is just completely for the idea that they need to rescue the aliens of the week. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's the thing that I, I noticed with just these three episodes alone, is that the writing got better. And I did notice, I did not jot the guy's name down, but it was the same writer for these three episodes. It seemed like he was really getting his his pace with these episodes. Because um, again, uh, like some of the previous episodes, we had some definitely some social issues brought about in this one. Slavery... Um, I I almost have to say there's a sort of a, j a jab at like Steve Jobs in this. Oh, absolutely! And Apple. It's just I think it's just one of the most blatant, you know, as opposed to love letter, I guess hate mail that I have ever <laughs> seen directed at at Apple computers, really. Yeah, I I, I love the fact that it was called Surf. Because, you know, that that brings me back to the Middle Ages, serfdom, you know, being a slave, yeah. working the land. Um, there were a lot of little jabs, especially for being a kid's show. 
I thought that was kind of um, really interesting that the guy was that there was all this subtext in this episode. And then there was the Morse code joke that I'm kind of surprised they went with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, I mean, this is a great episode all, all the way around. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I like this small little tribute they did at the end of the episode to Sarah Jane. Yeah. Miss Layden. You know, um, they, they do shots of pretty much everybody that's appeared on the show. Uh, including the original girl that uh, was there when they helped find Luke. Um, and, you know, got the little scene with David Tennant in K-9. And I like, you know, how they said the story would go on forever. Um, very, very fitting. Um, I teared up the first time I saw it, I'm not going to lie. Because it just, that it, that's when it really hit me that this was it for us with, with Sarah Jane. I mean, she's not going to be there for the 15th anniversary now. Um, there's, it, there's, she's just, she's just gone. And it's, it feels so much more real now. The, the montage was a little awkwardly placed, but honestly, I can't think of any any other way that they could have ended it. It just, you know, they had to do that. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 they had to do something, and I thought they did the best in which they could. I was really nervous watching the episode because they had shown that that dude had basically a, a ray gun. I was really worried that they were going to, like, CG a death scene or something in there for her, oh. which I thought would have been... I don't want to say poor taste, but I think it would have really have uh, just... Jaws would have dropped. Um, I thought they handled this amazingly well. And even though that Liz won't be there for the 50th, I hope they do something to acknowledge her passing like they did with the Brigadier. Um, I can't see them not doing that either for the 50th or for the upcoming season. Yeah, I mean, it, it's Stephen Moffat after all. Um, yeah, um, and I hope we get to see the kids again. I mean, I know that they're not going to star in their own TV show or anything. Production has totally shut down on the show. Um, which is really a shame. I mean, I get that Sarah Jane is the core of the show, and you can't really have her without Elizabeth Slayton, but I still feel like the groundwork was there to do something with the cast they have. Like, the characters are established well enough that they could have pushed on somehow. They, they could have, but... I, from what I have read, it was sort of a mutual shutdown of production. Everything from the, the studio to the BBC to a lot of the actors. It was just kind of like, this was her show. Um, and, yeah, which, which is a shame, a shame because, I mean, those four characters, I mean, play well off, well off each other. And I think if you would have thrown in, brought Ken Hyde back into it as a, as a full-time regular... Um, and I can't. And if Martha Jones wasn't on uh, on the uh, U UK version of Law and Order, you know, I could see one of those past companions coming in and working really, really well with the kids. But you know, this was Liz's show, um, and I'm happy that they're not continuing it because it was it, it was hers and, and no one else's and yeah. i'm really glad that a new generation of uh kids actually multiple generations of kids um got a chance to you know to meet sarah jane who i think is the real connection with new who to classic who i mean yeah you get you get your little your tidbits here and there but i think liz was the first one that really bridged it all she's the only person who was really an entity on both sides yeah and it makes me wonder if they're not going to try to do that with another character. Um, but there's only one I could really see that happening with, and that would be Susan, the actress that played Susan. Um, and I really don't know how she, what she looks like nowadays, how old she is. I'm really horrible with that sort of thing. Um, she's the only other real character that I could see them doing that with. Um, but Because, I, I mean... Because she has a history of being the granddaughter, uh, you know, of being in the exact same place these kids were. Um, but that's one of the things we got. We got to wait and see what's going to happen with the fiftieth. But I don't think they're going to do a spin-off show, you know, with Susan or anything like that. Um, but I mean, that's the only person I could really see bridging that gap with classic and new Who, um, just because of her importance in the entire show. So, what didn't we like about this episode? 
we talked about the good stuff. We talked about the tribute. I mean, what I mean, what was sort of a, a letdown with this episode? As funny as I thought all of the Steve Jobs jokes were yeah. that they had worked in through Surf. Yeah. And by the way, I think he did a great job with the part. I oh, I was I can't I, really see I, anyone else doing it better. Yeah, I wanted to say that that actor was phenomenal in that yeah, part. He was. Especially but, when the kids were controlling. I'm sorry. It was just. It oh, was. Yeah. It was. It was. I mean, that man had had some real acting ability, and not just you know, just some guy they hired to play the part. It's just after a certain point, it it, it almost came across as mean spirited, which I enjoy, but yeah. I can see why people wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I and you know, it wasn't like they timed it around his death, you know, because I mean, this was filmed. Last, I mean, a while ago. Oh yeah. I mean, it's just we a weird coincidence that you know he dies and then this airs. Um, that's just, I mean, which I don't know if it would be as mean spirited if he was still alive. But then right now with everything that's coming out about Steve Jobs, all the books, all the biopic movies, all the nasty dirt, I have trouble seeing this episode as something that wasn't made based around the allegations of like child labor in Apple factories. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so yeah. Um, the 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 aliens in this episode, I couldn't decide if they reminded me of Jawas or the midget things from Phantasm. I was actually gonna say they were modeled more after the Munchkins from The Wizard of Oz, when oh. you consider like the uh, design of the room where they were controlling yeah. the hologram. That sort of felt like the control room behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz, and. Or even Oompa Loompas. Oh, With yeah. them controlling the... Which, strangely enough, this is the anniversary of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with Richard Pryor. That just came out Tuesday, the anniversary edition. It's its big anniversary. You mean Gene Wilder, right? That's what I meant to say. What did I say? <laughs> Richard Pryor. <laughs> oh, God. Which, strangely enough, they did star together in more than one movie. Now I kind of want to see a Richard Pryor version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> I know it can't happen. But... It would be much better than the Tim Burton version with Johnny Depp. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, there was so, so much with those things, and you could tell how how bad their budget was when they could only afford makeup for one creature. Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, I thought it was a clever, a clever thing with the, with with the welding masks. I think it's really funny looking at the difference between Doctor Who and Sarah Jane Adventures in terms of budget. Yeah, because you can tell Sarah Jane Adventures is working much closer to the classic Who budget yeah. without adjustments for inflation. Yeah, and you know, it's like. There's a couple of shots where you can go, oh, okay, very clearly they're filming in the production office basement and they're just <laughs> using a couple of cardboard signs to indicate that it's a different building than it was last story arc. Yeah, yeah and I have to wonder, um, as, my, as my thought goes out the door, which I'll just let it go, because I honestly can't remember what I was going to say. It was going to be absolutely brilliant, but yeah, it's been a long weekend. Um... Oh, I know what I was gonna say. I wonder if they if they blew a lot more of their budget because I mean they pretty much filmed these these uh, season four and season five. They were filming them back to back, and the thing was is they were getting ready to move uh, filming locations. They were getting ready to move from where they were filming now to the to this special vi uh, filming village that they that they that they done where they have a, where they film a lot of different TV shows. Oh, okay. um, so I'm wondering if that's why because I think what they were doing was filming the first half. Then they were going to move everything and then film the last half. But because Liz died, it sort of kiboshed everything. So, I mean, I think this could have been one of those sort of budget filler episodes Why they for, for the move would be my guest. Or they might have blown a lot of their, their budget on the uh, Matt Smith episode. And then the uh, intro with, with, this, with this season with all the special effects with the lightning and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and this was one of those episodes where they sort of catch back up because I know with like the last episode of that totem pole, oh man, was the CG so bad? <laughs> it reminded me of Classic Who all over again, um, with just the bad effects, which I I absolutely adore. I love bad effects, um, especially when they're not taking themselves seriously. 
Um, but I wonder if that's what happened um, budget-wise with this episode. But, you know, still, I think the story, the acting, everything was top-notch. So it didn't need that that money to uh, supplement everything. Plus, I mean, they did get Luke back. Because um, I, I, he left the show... It, it was an amicable leave, sort of, where he became a recurring character instead of yeah. one of the main cast. Um, I th don't quote me on this, but I think he might have been the second highest paid actor on the show. Oh, um, you know, first Liz, then then the, the guy who played Luke, and then the other kids. Um, so it's a possibility that you know the reason why he went to recurring recurring was money reasons, um, and that's why they brought Sky in because you know if you. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's it's not called the, you know, Luke uh, Adventures, you know, Luke Smith Adventures. It's Sarah Jane. So, I mean, she was definitely always the one that was going. They, they would do whatever to keep her on the show, I, I would assume. But, yeah, no, I mean, I, this, I think this was a great episode for everything to end on. I'm sad that we're not going to see the rest of the season. Um, I actually went digging around for... A short amount of time on the uh, TARDIS wiki, which is like a, which is where I like to go for some of my information about production and stuff like that. I was really hoping they were gonna talk about the back half of the season, so I could talk about it here. Um, but they really didn't mention anything about the back half of the season. Um, I'm gonna dig around because I'm really, really curious because I'm because I kind of want to do a follow up thing where we discuss what was gonna be the rest of the season. Um, but we're, I just got to see if I can find any information out. So if you have any information and want to send it to us, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm really curious to see where, where they're plotting it. Because, I mean, they have the same writer for all six of these episodes. Um, who is also sort of the head dude right now. So I would, I would love to have seen, seen where he was going to take the show. Because he would, to me, he was taking it to some very exciting places. Because um, I thought the quality of writing, the acting, everything was just getting oh, yeah. better it just with the episode. Every episode. So, yeah. So, because um, I mean, if if they if they put it into book format, I'll read the books. Because when they, I mean, with them filming the season, the, the show back to back, like seasons back to back, like this, you can't tell me that they at least, even if they didn't have the scripts, they didn't have at least plotted where they wanted to take the, the rest of the season. Yeah. And I just really, and I want to say that I remember seeing at one point that back after the season online, you know, just some, you know, rumors and stuff, but I can't, I can't find it right now, but I, I'm going to dig because I really want to see where things were going, if we were going to see some of like Ellie come back um, and things like that, which, you know, I know you didn't want her to come back because it would be, you know, more realistic. I want her to come back because I thought Clyde had more chemistry with her than he ever did with Ronnie. Um, so, um, do you have anything else you want to say about this, the final installment of uh, the Sarah Jane Smith Adventures? It's kind of depressing just thinking that it's all come to an end and the circumstances behind yeah. why it did. It's just really sad. Yeah. It feels sort of like I just came in on Doctor Who right when everyone started to die, honestly. <laughs> well, I mean, the, I mean, honestly, this, guy, this is going to sound absolutely horrible. The, the good thing is, is, I mean, if you want to talk about the major, I mean, if you're talking about major deaths with Doctor Who, I mean, the, t the two, I mean, besides one of the actors dying that, that has played Doctor Who, I mean, literally, we lost the two quintessential companions at the same time. Yeah. Um, we lost the Brigadier. Uh, but luckily enough, I mean, even though he never made it into Doctor Who because of health reasons, he really wanted to. And they really wanted to have him, but health issues always arose. He did at least make it into um, some Sarah Jane Smith episodes, which I haven't shown you yet. Um, and, we, I mean, we lost the Brigadier. We lost uh, Sarah Jane. But, I mean, beyond that, there really isn't, I would say, those definitive companions left. Right. Except for maybe Susan, but, again, she never had the popularity or the longevity of the Brigadier or Sarah Jane. Um, so, I mean, you're pretty good, unfortunately. I mean, I hate to say it like that, but, I mean, 
there are going to be no other deaths besides the doctors now that are going to mean as much as the death of those two, that actor and actress. Yeah. So, I mean, you're kind of lucky. Um, and, and, and the best thing is you get to discover them, you know, what they right. did and stuff like that. Because um, I'm thinking next week I might show you... Uh, I mean, the Brigadier has just sort of come to be probably... Uh, out of, he's, he's my favorite classic Who companion, I think. Yeah, I mean, even though... I mean, I mean, he starts with the second Doctor. He's actually in a first Doctor story, if I remember correctly, the actor. And people have always, you know, sort of speculated in their heads that because it's in the future, this is a, a, a uh, descendant of the Brigadier. Um... But I mean, he was at the second doctor, the third doctor, the fourth doctor, the fifth doctor. Uh, I, did he ever appear with the sixth doctor? I can't remember. Um, but he was with Sylvester McCoy, the seventh doctor in Battlefield. Um, so I mean, he. I mean, <clears throat> he. I mean, yeah. He, uh, there's just so much history with that character in the show. Same thing with Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane's a great one because she bridges the two. Right. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean you're lucky. You get you you have so much to look forward to with these characters. Um, even though you've not, it's kind of like River Song in reverse. You know, you, you've seen their deaths. Now you get to see their lives, mm -hmm. which is a, an amazing thing. And so many kids out there now, I really hope that they seek out those classic Who episodes and watch them. Because um, I think Liz, even though at times they didn't know how to write her character, Sarah Jane. Because you can clearly, clearly see it, depending on who, which doctor she's with and what season it is. Um, she was still always a very strong female character. Um, a really good role model, I think, for uh, young girls and stuff like that. I think that's part of her popularity. Um, she She's always marked as being the different sort of companion. The interesting comparison <laughs> that I've seen drawn to her is that she almost serves sort of a Lois Lane role for the Doctor. That she's, she's that character who doesn't really take any of his crap and stands yeah. there. And he has to argue his case to her before he does something. Yeah. And that's... We've seen that quality in other more recent companions. I think that you can see a lot of that with most of the new Who companions, really. But... What? We never would have had that without Elizabeth Slade. No, I, and I think the one you really see it with, because I mean, I I will compare her to like the the uh, the Sarah Jane of the, of the of the new Who. It was Donna. Yeah. Um, because she would question the Doctor. She would not do what he said unless I mean, because like Martha and Rose. I mean, they they might ask questions. They might you know speak up, but I mean they would always cave, for the most part. But Donna, I mean, she really stood her ground uh, time and time again. Um, and I've always felt like she, to me, is, is, is a really solid comparison. She's the, she's the, um, she's the Sarah Jane of New Who, who I, th I thought Davies really messed up with that character. Because um, it's a shame with the way they did it, it's going to be really hard to bring her back. But I know she's going to be back for the 50th in some form or fashion. Um, but yeah, I just she she was a phenomenal actress. And honestly, I would have loved to have seen Donna and Sarah Jane. And they did meet, I mean, in 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 the Davros episodes of... But I mean, I really would have loved to have seen like a, a School Days or I mean... Yeah, the School Days episode with a Donna and... Um, Sarah Jane instead of a Sarah Jane and Rose because I think there would have been so much more witty banter between the two. Um, and maybe not, and maybe not so much redefinition, redefining of the character that Davies did with making Sarah in love with uh, the Doctor because you never got that feeling I think in the show, Classic Who. I mean, she, I mean, she looked up to him. She found him a fascinating character, but I never thought at any point that they were ever in she was ever in love with him. Yeah, my, my whole interpretation of that had always been more of a father-daughter vibe, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, when she first met the Doctor, which I, I can't decide what we're going to watch next week, if it's going to be 
Time Warrior, which is the uh, the very first Sarah Jane, um, which I have, or the TV movie, because I really want to watch the TV movie with you. Okay. Because I really want that commentary, because I'm really curious about your take, because it's been a long time since I've had a chance to get on my soapbox about that. Um, because, I mean, I don't hate it as much as, as, as some people do. Um, but I'm just really sad to see Liz go. And, and just like, yeah, I mean, I hate to say it. I'd rather seen, I, I would rather have seen Tom Baker die than Liz Slayton die. Um, but I, I'm sort of running out of words here because I'm just, I'm, I'm very emotional about this. Um. Though we did have an amazing toast to, to the Brigadier and Sarah Jane uh, at Con Carolinas uh, this year. Um, got to say a few words at a, at, a, at a sort of private memorial to the two of them. It, it was it was amazing. But um, do you have any final words to say about Sarah Jane, Sarah Jane Adventures? Um, anything? Uh, I, I just think that Elizabeth Slade's contributions to Doctor Who are... I think there are doctors that have actually contributed less to the mythology of the character than she has. Just, I mean, she's she sort of defined in a lot of ways what a companion was supposed to be from that point on. Oh yeah, um, I uh, I get a chance to, uh, because I, I have some friends slash fans that um, go to England quite a bit, and they brought me back the uh, Sarah Jane uh, or the Doctor Who magazine. That was a tribute right after her death. And, I mean, a lot of the quotes from, like, John Berriman, David Tennant, Matt Smith were pretty much spot on with that. I mean, she was, I mean, the definitive um, Who girl. I mean, kind of taking the spoof off the, the Bond girl thing. But, I mean, she really, they really said that, I mean, that is who a lot of the newer companions and companions of the future are gonna look to to see how they should play their companion. Um, she she really did define the companions of today um, on so many different levels. I mean, because you're right, she she was the definitive. I mean, and who would have thought that um, that Liz would be would be the one, um, which which I think is great. Which I mean. I mean, there was a, there was a potential spinoff back in the day called K Nine and Company, yeah. and the companion that they chose to be with K Nine was Liz. I mean, because I th I think they saw the potential there. It just just didn't happen for one reason or another. But yeah, it it couldn't happen to a more amazing actress. Um, and I look forward to um, actually picking up her biography, which is getting ready to come out, and reading that. Um, I don't read many biographies. I don't remember read many read many books right now because I'm in grad school, which is sad to say since I'm in library school. But uh, I'm going to take the time to read the list slate slate and bio because I'm really curious um, about the, the things I don't know about her, about her career, about her life, um, especially with her battle with cancer, which I didn't even know was going on um, until she died. And I don't think a lot of people knew how sick she was because um, I mean her death really came out of left field for a lot of us um, and I was really happy to see when uh, Zero Bryant Designs did this shirt because um, he wasn't taking any money for it I mean it was all going to uh, breast cancer um, research so I mean my hat goes off to him um, and not only for you know doing this great shirt but you know donating the money to, to a great cause because that's one of the reasons why I bought the shirt um, I hope he's still doing that I don't know if he still has a shirt available he's still doing that but it was a great thing that he did because I mean he really whipped this shirt up the day it like literally within 24 hours of her death and was like yeah, I, I have to do this this is the way I have to sort of cope and deal with what with happened um, I actually wrote a, an audio drama which will be produced by uh, Rich Siegfried um, which is sort of my uh, way I dealt with it um, yeah, I'm just waiting for him to actually record it all it, it's a really cool thing um, but um, it is it is truly an end of an era um, with classic who now with with the with the passing of Liz, um, and I I do look forward to the uh, to her um, 
whatever they do in the 50th or even next season to sort of tip their hat to her, lay the character to rest. And um, I'm curious to see now if anything else is going to spin, spin off of Doctor Who since, you know, they've lost Sarah Jane. Um, because I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind seeing a show about Unit or something. That might be interesting. Um, but um, until next time, unless you have anything else to say, are you good? Until next time, uh, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio uh, uh, signing off.